Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our Untangle Tech Talk session. Uh, today we will be talking about the setting up Untangle in a virtual machine. Um, if you're not familiar with the Untangle solution and all that we offer, uh, this might be a, a further deep dive into getting started with Untangle and understanding how to get it deployed. So uh, my name is Katie Benson. I'm the Director of Sales here at Untangle. On the line with us, we have John Coffin, who's our Director of QA, who will be demoing the session today and answering some questions. Uh, we also have some team members on the back end who will be answering questions throughout the session. If you're new to the Tech Talk series, um, if you cannot hear us, uh, you will need to use the audio panel to select the preferences. Um, if you're calling in by telephone, you'll see the dial, uh, a dial-in number and the access code that you can um, access the, the call here, there. Um, if you you're viewing this recording. Uh, we will be sending this out um, 24 hours after the session ends, um, so be on alert for that. And uh, if you have any questions during the session, we're happy to answer those on the back end. If it's uh, important to everybody on the call to have that um, answered in during the session, um, myself or John will pull, <clears throat> excuse me, will pull those in as needed. So feel free to use your question panel um, to ask anything that you have, um, you know, concerns about. Um, and to get started, uh, thank you again for joining us. I will pass it over to John to, to move forward. So thanks again. Thanks for uh, joining us uh, today. I hope that we can answer all your questions about virtual deployments. And uh, again, uh, just ask us some questions if uh, we're not covering exactly what you need for this type of uh, deployment. Uh, just to go over, um, Untangle has a wide range of deployment options. Uh, you can buy an Untangle uh, hardware uh, router from us, pre-configured with our software. You just bring it in, plug it in, and configure it for your network. Um, pretty easy to do. You can also download our software and install it on your hardware. And uh, lastly, but not least, um, and what we're covering today is that you can actually get Untangle running on a virtual uh, server, um, widely known as uh, a VM deployment. So there's a couple options that you have. Um, we also have on our website uh, more on the resources on how to deploy these in these different ways. So um, when you virtualize Untangle, uh, it makes it quite easy to um, start an instance up, get running, um, provide different settings, and uh, maybe run this uh, temporarily in a virtual machine and then decide to put this on uh, regular hardware later on, depending on your needs. Some of the benefits of virtualizing, um, you don't need a separate server. Um, you can save money in that respect. Um, quite a few small businesses or even home users might already have a VM server of some sort. Um, it's much easier to deploy. We actually provide a uh, VMware image so you can quickly load that up and avoid uh, half of the install steps of getting that employed. Um, some of the other things is that uh, you can actually deploy Untangle remotely. So if you have like a satellite office, they already have a virtual machine, you can actually get Untangle up and running without ever visiting that office. Um, some of the limitations, and it has nothing to do about the software, it's just in general limitations about uh, virtualization. Uh, networking issues are much uh, more difficult to diagnose because not only are you dealing with your physical network, but you're also dealing with the uh, network configuration that's on the VM server itself. Um, so you really have to understand how internal uh, networking works inside the virtual machines. Another um, the other possibility is that um, if you have multiple uh, VM servers running on the same um, VM hardware, is that uh, you know other servers will create large loads. It will slow down the performance of your Untangle and also affect your uh, network speeds. So you have to be very aware of what other services are running on that and try to uh, you know, definitely reserve some uh, memory and uh, CPU uh, amounts on your virtual box for the uh, Untangle itself, not to impact your network speeds. 
Um, so we're mainly going to cover using uh, VMware's ESX uh, iServer. Um, to point, uh, many people have deployed Untangle on uh, Microsoft Hypervisor. Uh, they also have it running on uh, VMware's uh, Workstation Player on a PC and so forth. Um, the reason we're covering the ESX server, um, it's officially supported. Uh, we do do a full range of tests uh, when, on our deployments on ESX services. Um, some of the requirements um, just for any kind of VM server, uh, it must have at least two physical NICs. Uh, it's important to that effect because um, while in the VM networking, you can actually create multiple uh, network uh, separations. What they are is almost like virtual switches and they're not complete um, network NICs. So they, it's very important that you actually have two physical NICs that you can actually separate the WAN from the LAN. Um, the quick way to set it up is Untangle actually provides a, a VM image that it's called the OVA that you can deploy to your virtual box. Um, it avoids all the hardware uh, configuration steps because uh, since we already know what the hardware landscape is on a virtual box, we're able to skip those steps and you quickly go into just setting up Untangle for your particular network. Um, the VM workstation does work with Untangle on the OVAs. Um, due to, you know, that you're sharing uh, the resources and so forth with a desktop and desktop usage can be unpredictable. We are only recommend that for testing and uh, getting your settings set up. Uh, many people have used the uh, VM workstation when they um, ported their settings from version 9.4, which is uh, the last of the upgrades for that particular version all the way uh, to maybe uh, 10 or even the most recent 12 because they're trying to update their uh, older version of Untangle of 9.4. So it's, uh, there's a couple of uses on that. Um, we have step-by-step -step directions for getting Untangle running on our uh, VMware. Um, I posted uh, this link. Uh, this will be actually, if you go to the website and you just go to virtual machines, you'll be able to get the step-by-step -step directions. Um, some of the just um, good, you know, better practices to do. Um, you want to place your uh, VM management network on its own vSwitch. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to go through. Also, if you're doing some uh, network debugging, on your inside your uh, virtual machine network, it's easier to um, you know um, not get any of your network uh, your management GUI traffic um, confused with some of your actually um, machine and network traffic that you're trying to figure out what's happening. Um, you do want to enable uh, persuasive uh, persu uh, excuse me. Scusius mode on the VM switches um, to connect, um, and this is mainly if you're in a bridge mode configuration. If you're in router mode, it's uh, less important to do that. Again, um, each V switch should be connected to its own physical or VLAN tag uh, NIC. So this is so much for the theoretical. Let's look at actually how I deploy it, uh, the uh, Untangle on an actual ESX server. So we'll go ahead and go to our um, Untangle webpage and we'll say uh, we'll go down to our downloads. So there's two ways. I mean you could um, download the I, uh, ISO CD image and load that up directly into VM and go through the hardware steps and then finally, the easier way is to just click on the OVA network appliance uh, image. Just download that in. So, I've actually already downloaded it, so I have it here all ready to go. So I'll switch over and log into my uh, 
VMware source, uh, server. So this is probably pretty familiar for those who use ESX uh, servers. Um, again, it's just a deployment. So I'll go ahead, I want to deploy that here. So I'll go ahead and say I'm going to deploy my OVA uh, template. So I'll select that. Oh, didn't have my downloaded client installed on this one. One second while I uh, get that deployed. Sorry about that step. So um, we're just going to go ahead and um, get that OVA uploaded real quickly to that. What I'm actually going to do is go ahead and deploy that on a different web browser. Okay, let's see here. Just got to close this off real quick. So I can Everything's running a little slower today. So I think what I'm going to do is to speed this up, I'm just going to go ahead and install my OVA on a different box that already has the plugin installed for me. Let's see if this one's done. Log back in to my ESX server. And let's just find my uh, particular deployment. Okay. Let's try this again. So I'll go ahead and say deploy my OVA. And it doesn't like it so much. So, okay. So, let me just go ahead and deploy that quickly. And really, it just amounts to uploading that OVA to um, your ESX server. And it will automatically uh, set up all the proper uh, hard drives and uh, everything that needs to be set for that particular uh, untangle the memory so I'm just going to go ahead and deploy it on a browser that already has it installed Real quick. 
Click here. Sorry for the delay here. Yeah, while John's working on that, feel free to ask your questions. Uh, we have quite a few questions coming in on different versions, um, and we've got some team members on the back side that can help uh, answer those. So feel free to ask your questions. We'll get to you, and, and while this is loading, we'll, um, we'll take care of you. Feel free uh, if you want to call out some questions that we can answer. Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, I think some of the good questions were, um, does Entangle support other hyperversions um, other than VM? Um, if you want to touch on that, I know that we, we actually get that question quite often. Um, if you want to answer that one to help out, that would be helpful. So um, technically, um, you can actually um, load the Entangle on almost any kind of VM. It's uh, widely used on other VMs. Uh, for example, uh, there's several people on the forums. Uh, if you go onto the forums, again, that's a really good resource for any kind of questions that you have. Um, there's a lot of uh, customers who are on there regularly answering other customers' questions, plus uh, myself and uh, another, you know, our founder is on there quite often uh, answering questions for those that need that. Um, so there's several people that are using the Microsoft um, Hypervisor VM. Um, it does work with that. Um, it's readily deployed on those areas. Um, some of the, um, now it kind of goes with a caveat. While it's not technically supported, we will uh, answer questions on those and try to get your deployment on there. And uh, a lot of the reason we don't support it directly is it's just not tested uh, on a regular basis with that particular platform. Uh, with all the different our hardware and uh, software platforms that we have to we have to kind of limit at some point. And right now, VMware is probably the widestly uh, deployed. But again, it does not require you to use uh, VM uh, ESX server. So if you happen to have already a Microsoft hypervise that's installed somewhere, feel free to uh, use that on there. It's used by several people. Uh, as you go on the forums, uh, people have kind of uh, worked around a couple of minor issues. Um, although with the newest version, um, you won't have to use the legacy uh, NIC drivers. You can actually use the standard drivers on hypervisor. So you'll see that um, it's quite rarely used on that, and people have had um, very good success with that. Um, if there's other kind of VMs that you are using out there, please let us know. That way we kind of know um, what our customers are using and what's the common deployment out there. Yeah, I was actually going to uh, elaborate on that a little bit too. Um, as John was mentioning, we, we support many versions, um, but from a technical aspect in our support area, um, it is VMware. And um, that doesn't mean that we won't answer your questions. That just means um, we might not be as knowledgeable on the setup or it might be um, you know, something that we're not um, guaranteeing to work or, or have tested in the past. So um, the, the community forum and the, the wiki or uh, posting questions might be the best way to get answers on, on a specific version uh, or hypervisor, for sure. Thanks for that. Um, I'm just go ahead and deploying the uh, OVA right now. Okay, great. Thanks, John. Um, if, you, if you're not aware, if this is your first Tech Talk session, um, if you're not aware, we actually do these quite um, frequently, and we have selected uh, the majority of our modules to kind of deploy and, and to demo. Um, so um, if you are on our website and you click on the Resources tab, uh, it will take you to our webinars and recordings. You're able to see those um, previously recorded webinars on SSL inspection, um, web filtering, uh, you can see it on uh, policy management, captive portal, uh, all the different modules that we offer. Uh, those are great sessions that uh, John walks through with the configurations. Um, we answer questions throughout those sessions. So, and, and normally they're about 30 minutes, so if you have a, a few minutes to check those out and you're interested in the different features that we offer, um, feel free to check those out and they can be found, on, again, on the website under the resources tab and you click on webinars and videos. Um, there's also community webinars on there um, for, for release. There's Untangle 101s. We do have a, a higher level 
um, webinar series that uh, you can watch and kind of get an overview if you're brand new to Untangle. Um, you know, and also feel free to call in to sales or support um, and we'll try to answer your questions there as well. We're almost there at the deployment. Awesome. Hey John, we have a we have a question around um, the V switch that you were mentioning. Um, should be on a V. Uh, the, you mentioned that the management network should be on a V switch. Is there a preference for that or a reason why that is? Does it work better in this situation versus another? Um, maybe that it, could clarify on that a little. Right. Yeah. It's it's strictly uh, to um, um, have it where it's easier to diagnose traffic. So when you're um, using that traffic and so forth. Uh, if you need to um, debug anything at, at all in that area, um, it's much easier if you're, uh, since you're going to be using the GUI and then you're trying to see what kind of traffic is coming in there, you want to have it so it's separate, and that's really the main reason to have that in there. Great. It looks like we're making some progress on your side. Is that? Um, yeah. Well, okay. Great. Just need to... Thanks for your patience, everybody. Sorry. Uh, sometimes things don't always work as uh, well as they did in the practice round. Yeah, and this, this session will be recorded. We'll try to um, edit it a little bit so that it saves on a little bit of your time. Um, but again, we appreciate you taking the time to, to sit with us today. We'll, we'll get you the recording so that you can rewatch this as a, as a um, recap. Sorry. All right, so we have our VMware uh, setting up right now. Uh, we'll be able to, um, all I did was uh, go ahead and select that deploy OVA uh, file, selected the file that I just downloaded from untangle.com, uh, went through a couple questions of like, where do I want to uh, create the storage for it and so forth. And now I've gone ahead and deployed that. I'm going to go ahead and um, it's starting up right now. Uh, it's going to handle all the kernel compression, setting up all the VM uh, networking and so forth. There, there will be a couple questions, which uh, vSwitch do you want to connect to? Uh, by default, there is uh, two networks. There is the external, which would be your WAN, and the internal, which would be your LAN side. You can go ahead and add more NICs to your configuration after you deploy the OVA. So you're able to add as many uh, network connections as you need. Just waiting for this to start up. Just check to see if it's... Just takes a few minutes. Um, some other um, things to look at is that um, you, you want to make sure that you have enough uh, memory reserved for that. So when you look at the deployment, so I'll go ahead and here's my summary. Um, so in this case, I've, I've only allocated uh, 16 gigs to the hard drive. You can definitely allocate a lot more than that. Um, Again, it's uh, you, you'll have two network adapters set up for that. Um, I've uh, set up one on the WAN, which is our rigor uh, engineering area, and then this is a test network. So we can have, um, you, you know, you don't have to have a CD and floppy because it's already set up. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look. So you're going to, 
this is the great thing about the OVA. You jump right into the setup wizard. You don't have all the hardware questions that you have to go into and setting up all the packages. That's all pre-configured in the OVA, so it makes a much quicker deployment. I'll go ahead and um, uh, go through the setup wizard and uh, make my choices for my network. I'll go ahead and put a password, set my time zone. Again, by default, um, we start you off with two network um, switches, which usually is enough for most people. Um, you're welcome to add more. What I would do to add more network configurations is I would go ahead and edit my VM hardware for this particular instance. And then I could just add more uh, network devices, uh, depending on how many networks I need for my particular configuration. So I'll go ahead and configure that. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to use a, a static IP address, just so it's easier. But it does work uh, just as well with a um, DHCP configuration. Go ahead and as you can see it's far quicker when you're deploying an OVA for those who have done the hardware. I'll go ahead and uh, again um, I'll just set up upgrades to be automatic. Uh, collecting the cloud is so you can uh, take a look at any kind of uh, configuration that you have if you're using our um, command center. And John, actually that would be a great um, segue into, uh, I know this is a Tech Talk series, but if you're on the call and you're not familiar with our newly released uh, cloud centralized management console, this is a great chance to take a look at that. Um, as John was mentioning on the setup for the VM, um, if you have selected that um, phoning home through the cloud, um, Untangle will have access or visibility to your, your Untangle deployment, and then you can remotely access um, that box and, and push policies. So uh, that's a later session, of course, but if you're not familiar with that and, you're, and you've used Untangle in the past, uh, it's a great time to take a look at that command center option that we offer now. So I, as you can see, it took about two minutes to go through um, the Untangle configuration. So now I'm configured. I'm able to uh, go ahead and uh, configure any kind of apps that I want for that. Um, you know, I can put my web filter, um, the antivirus. Um, I can go ahead. Definitely, you know, are going to want uh, reporting. And it's going to act and um, all the settings will be the same as if you were on a hardware configuration. So it's it's very straightforward. Um, I can start this. Uh, I can start it all over again and create a new configuration. And there's multiple ways that I can um, configure this depending on what I want to do. So I'll go ahead and if I look at my apps, uh, here they are. They're installed. Of course, you know we get the trial. Um, on the paid apps. Um, I can go ahead and then make my configurations, start passing the traffic through my VM box based on the NICs that I've selected um, again over here. So I just have to make sure that these NICs are the ones set up. Um, if you want more details on this, what we'll do is just go ahead and let me just go back to the home here. So you can see how my network configuration is set up. So if we go to uh, networking, let 
must be a lot going on today because Uh, let's see. Well, it's not like me or today. So um, this is really the the basics of the deploying that that network. Um, again, uh, the key is just getting the um, OVA uh, downloaded and set up on that. Uh, it's right here. does not uh, want to follow what I'm doing here. So again, um, the key is to definitely have these uh, two NICs on a different connection. So that's the, let's see if we can get this the way I want it. Well, it's not cooperating today. So let's go back here. Um, again, um, it's uh, it's uh, critical to have those um, the WAN and the LAN on different uh, NICs and the key part on that. So let's go back to our uh, slides here real quick. And there are still a lot of questions coming through. What, <clears throat> what we might want to do is just recap um, uh, the session in our recording as we send that out uh, 24 hours after the session is ended. That'll come out tomorrow. Um, if we find that the session needs to be recorded um, a second time, uh, we'll probably dive back into maybe another version of the virtual machine um, uh, at a later date. So um, thanks, John, for your, for your, uh, your setup here today. And uh, let's finish out on the slides and um, let's if, you know, finish up for today with answering any questions that we can still answer today. Yeah, so um, one of the things I want to do is like if you, you do have trouble with your VM, um, definitely look at the session viewer. Um, it will tell you the kind of traffic that's going through your box and how that traffic is going through, and it does solve a lot of the other problems. Um, some of the other things to do is look at the events, too, in uh, reports. Um, what kind of, uh, you know, if you're, if you're not seeing any traffic um, on your reports, it's definitely that there's no traffic going through that box, and then you just have to work with your uh, virtual networking to figure out what it is. Uh, again, ask some questions on the forums. It will be very useful for you. Uh, with that, um, I'm open to any questions or anything we have. To... Okay. Um, can you uh, check, uh, run to the last slide for me? So um, as you can see, uh, you know, some areas of Untangle are a little bit more tricky than others. This virtual setup um, normally is fairly quick and easy. Um, unfortunately, we had some technical issues on the back end today with uh, multiple things going on. Um, so we apologize for that. But um, if you are uh, if having any issues or technical questions, um, we do have our support team and our pre-sales uh, engineer that can assist you with some technical questions. Um, if you're a current uh, subscriber to Untangle and you need some additional services or one-on-one -on -one help, um, our professional services might be uh, something that you want to take a look at. Um, they can help you with the installation and configuration portion. Uh, they can help you with um, uh, optimizing your setup um, to make sure that it's fitting your needs and working the way that you um, intended for it to. Um, so those professional services might be something that you can um, leverage to get some additional uh, help uh, and that can be found on, on our website as well or at the link here that you see. Um, again, just to touch on um, the Tech, Tar web, uh, Tech Talk webinar, excuse me, um, we have uh, on May 18th, we have Untangle 101 around our command center. As I was mentioning earlier, it's a great release. Um, it is a rolling release, so we're continuously updating the feature sets um, and if you are using it today, thank you. Give us feedback. Let us know what we can do better with that. 
Uh, we do have some really cool things coming in the very near future, uh, one with Command Center and one with some versions. So um, the roadmap is, is looking great, and we're excited about the releases coming up. Uh, we do have another Tech Talk on mo uh, managing mobile devices coming up on June 6th. Feel free to register on that uh, for that on our website. Um, and if you have any additional questions, again, sales and support are great resources to reach out um, and just ask your questions. Um, our wiki has uh, a ton of information about um, setup and leveraging different instances, uh, looking at the technical aspects. Um, that would be a, a great place to check out. Or um, our, a ton of our community members, our engineering staff, a lot of our sales staff here are on the forums as well. Uh, pretty constantly or regularly. So feel free to uh, post your question there. If you're having an issue, I guarantee somebody else has had the same issue in the past and uh, we'll have an answer for you there. Um, so with that said, what I will do is, uh, given the time constraints today, I will go ahead and uh, end for today instead of asking a Q&A session, but we will follow up with the questions we didn't get back to um, and uh, we'll have the recording out to you tomorrow. Again, if we find that the recording is not uh, helpful or useful, we might do a second session on virtual uh, the setup, and uh, we'll go from there at that time. So thank you for your time today, everybody. John, do you have anything else to add before we end? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay, awesome. All right, guys, have a great day, and thanks again for your time. Talk to you soon.